What's going on friends? If you want to get the absolute best possible tune you can for your fuel injected Harley Davidson without having to take it to a dyno tuner, then a wideband tuning system might just be the answer to what you're looking for. Now there are several reasons why you might want to go to a wideband tuning system. Maybe you just don't have a dyno tuner that's locally available and you'd have to travel some distance to get your bike tuned. Another reason might be that maybe your dyno tuner is just flat backed up. I mean, these guys are busy, especially when we're coming into the spring and summer months. Or maybe you just feel like that, uh, maybe the dyno is just hard on your motorcycle. <laughs> or another reason could be that maybe you just like to do things yourself and you don't really like other people touching your bike for anything. So today, we're going to take a look at some of the top wideband tuning systems out there and even some options if you already own a flash tuner and you're running it with your narrowband system. And we're also going to look at what the other things you need to consider if you want to move to a wideband system. But before we get into all that, please be sure to drop a like on the video if you enjoy it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. So you might be thinking, well, I've already got the Screaming Eagle tuner, I've already got a Fuel Pack 3, or I've got a Power Vision, and it's got Auto-Tune on it. That's correct. It does have auto-tune on it, but it is auto-tuned with the narrowband sensors. Now, narrowband sensors have a very narrow range that they read in, which is only 14.3 AFR to 15.3 AFR. And this is basically just what your cruise range is, kind of with what you see here. Now, your narrowband sensors cannot read outside this narrow cruise range. So if you're at wide open throttle and you're outside of this cruise range, your bike's having to rely on the programmed AFR table in the motorcycle, and it's not taking any feedback from those O2 sensors. Where this can be an issue is if you have any drastic altitude changes or weather changes, you may not be hitting that target AFR for that cell within that AFR table. Now what the wideband system's going to do is it's going to replace your factory narrowband oxygen sensors with wideband oxygen sensors. And just like as the name implies, they read a much wider range. The wideband system is actually able to read from 10.0 to 18.0 AFR, which means now the ECM can see everything that's going on in real time, and with these wideband tuning systems, they'll make the adjustments in real time for you. Now there is a lot more to that, but that's just kind of the down and dirty on the difference between the narrow band and the wideband, and we'll get into that more here a little bit later on how these actually work and what's going on with them. Now with the wideband system, it doesn't matter if you're outside of the cruise range. If you're outside of that narrow cruising range, it's these, oxygen, these O2 sensors are going to be able to read in real time exactly what's going on, and they're gonna be able to make those real time adjustments for elevation and weather changes. So if you've ever noticed when the weather changes and your bike starts popping with D-cell pop when it gets hot or cold or anything, but if the weather's just right, it's just fine. That's why, because your narrow band sensors aren't able to read in those ranges. Now, before you invest in a wideband system for your motorcycle, and it really doesn't matter which one you go with, and we're going to see those here in just a minute, but you'll want to be aware that the fact that most of your Harley-Davidson factory headers, they only have a 12 millimeter exhaust bung. All your wideband sensors are going to be 18 millimeter. Now, this is going to have to force you to buy an aftermarket exhaust or take your factory header down and have a welding shop or somebody weld the 18 millimeter bungs in for you. Now, Harley-Davidson does have a tool, but it's about 400 bucks, and they say it's for only the 2017 and later Touring models, and I can kind of see why, because some of the earlier model bikes, you might end up actually cracking your pipe, trying to run that tap in there, or you're going to make it thin enough that it's eventually going to split. Now, most aftermarket exhaust systems today, you'll have to check with the exhaust system manufacturer, but they will already be capable of going ahead and doing nothing else but screwing in that 18 millimeter wideband oxygen sensor. And they also come with adapters to allow you to put a factory 12 millimeter narrowband sensor in there if you're not running a wideband system. So just keep in mind that you're probably going to be looking at an aftermarket exhaust system if you're running a factory header with slip-ons and you want to move to a wideband system. First wideband system on my list today, in my opinion, it's probably one of the best ones out there. It's probably one of the most well-known out there, and this is the Thundermax. Now, the Thundermax is a complete ECM replacement. You're going to completely replace your factory ECM, and you're going to put this new Thundermax ECM in there that already has the wideband O2 sensors. And I'm going to tell you why that's important, because the factory ECM is not equipped to handle wideband systems. So with a wideband system, 
all the other products we're going to look at today, you have to get basically a control box that is a signal interpreter for the ECM, which allows it to interpret and understand the wideband O2 sensors. Because like I mentioned, the factory ECM is only basically designed to run with narrow band. Now one of the great benefits of the Thunder Max is if you buy it from say Zippers or Fuelmoto, which I think Fuelmoto has about the best price on them, you just let them know what your setup is. Hey, I've done a big bore kit, I've done cams, I got some of this, I got this air cleaner, this exhaust. They will go ahead and preload your new Thunder Max ECM with the proper tune for your motorcycle. All you have to do is pop it in and literally go ride it. And with the wideband sensor, it tunes everything in real time. You don't have to do anything else. This is the closest thing you can get to a professional tune without getting on a dyno. And the Thunder Max is also available for fuel-injected Harleys from 2002 all the way up to the present. So whatever Harley you're riding, if it's fuel-injected, there's likely going to be a Thunder Max ECM for you. Now, the downside to the Thunder Max ECM is it is expensive. These things range anywhere from $899 to almost $1,000. But like I said, Fuel Moto's got a really good price on them. Now, I would highly recommend the Thunder Max if you don't already have a tuner and you're looking to invest in one, or if you're just looking to replace your current tuner. But if you have a tuner that you're happy with, there's a couple of them out there that actually do have add-ons to add a wideband system. Say you have the Screamin' Eagle Street Performance Tuner. You can get the Screamin' Eagle Smart Tune Pro. This is a wideband O2 sensor add-on that goes with your street tuner. Now, what this is going to do is it's basically going to plug in plug into your bike and you're going to hook it up to your oxygen sensors and as we mentioned it is basically a signal interpreter which allows the factory ECM to operate with the wideband sensors and make the changes. Now the issue with using this system with the street performance tuner is that your air fuel ratios are locked. So you're not going to be able to go in and adjust those to make it a little richer like you'd be able to do with the Thunder Max or with the Power Vision. So basically your cruising range is stuck at 14.6 and anything outside of that's going to be a bit leaner than what you could get with any other tuner out there. But if you've already invested in the street performance tuner and you have a warranty concern or you don't want to change, this is a good option to look at. Now the only problem with this is, is it's only available for the later model Harleys. Now if you have a Sportster 2017 or newer, it'll fit that. A Dyna or Softail has to be 2016 or newer. But if you have a touring model, it is available for anything 2014 or newer in a touring bike. Now, if you're already invested in a Power Vision, DinoJet does offer an add-on for the Power Vision called the Target Tune. This gives you basically the ability to add the Wideband O2 sensors and use it with your existing Power Vision. It is the same setup as the Screamin' Eagle, where you get a little add-on module in there, which is going to interpret the signal to the ECM. Yes, this is kind of a piggyback system, but it is from DinoJet, and it does work pretty well, and it would save you being out the $600 that PowerVision used to cost, even though the price has come down now. But these retail for about $479, and what you get is you get the benefit of doing an auto-tune with the wideband system, flashing that map to your bike, and then as you ride your bike, you've already got all your target AFRs in there, this system will actually make adjustments on the fly, just like the other wideband systems do as well. Now, if you have the older version of the Target Tune called the Auto Tune that was also made by DinoJet and went with the Power Vision, yeah, they do have an upgrade for you, so you don't have to go buy out and buy the $479 system. You can just get the module itself for $239, and this will plug right into everything that your older Auto Tune system had. So that's a pretty good deal there if you're looking to upgrade to the latest version. Now, unfortunately, if you're running a Fuel Pack 3, there really isn't a wideband system that works with the Fuel Pack 3. Well, there is, but it's not like the others. You can get a better tune with this, but it's going to require a $570 investment. Now, this $570 investment is the Fuel Pack Pro. Now, this was designed for dyno tuners to hook up to a motorcycle and be able to tune for somebody that has a fuel pack 3. But you can buy this system, you can hook it up on your motorcycle, plug your fuel pack 3 into it, and go auto-tune your motorcycle just as you normally would. But the difference is you're getting a wide band auto-tune and not that narrow band auto-tune. 
Now this system isn't designed to be left on the motorcycle. So after you go out and you run a good auto-tune session and you're happy with it, you're gonna have to save it to your fuel pack three, then come back, take all of this back off, remove the wide band sensors, put your narrow band sensors in. Now while you have a much better tune than you ever would have gotten with your narrow band sensors, you're not gonna get the benefits of getting the adjustments in real time like you would with the wide band tuning system. So guys, while there is no replacement for a good professional dyno tune, this will get you very, very close. The benefit of that good professional dyno tune is you have that human intervention where you've got somebody with years of experience tuning the motorcycle and they see things that the computer doesn't and they use the computer to get that bike tuned just perfect. But this right here will get you very, very close, a lot closer than you could ever get with narrow band sensors. So guys, if you compare the prices looking at the Power Vision and then the add-on Target Tune, you're right up there with the price of the Thunder Max. That's why I said if you haven't already picked a tuner out, take a look at that Thunder Max before you buy and really think about down the road what you're going to do to your motorcycle. But if you already have a Power Vision, you're already partially invested, I can see it being worth just going ahead and getting the Target Tune. But anyhow guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video today. I hope that gave you some insight into the mystery of the wideband tuning systems. And if you enjoyed the video, please drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. But anyhow guys, that's all I've got for you this week. You guys stay safe on the streets, dodge the cars, stay safe, and I'll catch you guys in next week's video. Thanks for watching.